Welcome to an overview video about creating a meal plan in Foodworks Online Professional. In this video, we will cover creating a meal plan for the workspace, setting the number of days for the meal plan, adding meals and foods, editing meal plan sections, viewing the nutrient analysis, generating a report, creating a meal plan for a client, and copying meal plans to clients. Let's begin. In Foodworks Online, you can create a meal plan as a resource for your workspace, or you can create a meal plan for a specific client. Meal plans that are initially created as a workspace meal plan can be copied to one or more clients, and meal plans created for a specific client can be copied to different clients. This means you can move meal plans around in your workspace as necessary, which I will show you how to do later in the video. To create a new meal plan for the workspace, you will first need to open or create a workspace. Today, I will be working in an example professional workspace. In the navigation pane, click the plus icon and select meal plan from the dropdown. Then enter a name for the meal plan. I will be creating a vegetarian meal plan, so I will enter this as the name, which now appears in the navigation pane. Note that this resource is currently in a draft version and any information I enter will be automatically saved. A draft version is indicated with a small purple circle next to its name and icon in the navigation pane. A resource will remain as a draft until you either choose to publish or delete it. On the general tab, there are a variety of optional fields you may wish to use. The first optional field is the tag field. A resource tag is a user-defined label that you can create and apply to any resource within the workspace. Tags are color-coded and can be used to filter your resources in the navigation pane. An example of tags you may wish to use are high protein, gluten-free, or low sodium. To add a tag, click add tag and either select an existing tag if they are available or create a new tag. The meal plan I am creating is vegetarian, so I will create a new tag and add this to the meal plan. The next optional fields include the ID1 and ID2 fields, which are searchable terms in the navigation pane and in the food or ingredients grid of a resource. An example of where these IDs may be helpful is if you have multiple versions of the same meal plan, you may wish to use the ID fields to help locate a specific version of the meal plan, or if you have a specific ID that has relevance in your business. I will write version one in the ID one field as an example. The next optional fields are the description and notes fields, which can be used to document additional information about a meal plan. Keep in mind that this information is not searchable. Today, I will be leaving both of these fields blank. Finally, on the general tab, you can see that an activity log exists, which will track when this resource is first published and will record any changes that occur for this resource, which can be very helpful information to refer back to, especially if you are collaborating with other users in your Foodworks Online organization on resources. Before we move on to the next tab, Let's discuss the navigation pane, which is on the left-hand side of your screen and can be collapsed or expanded with the expander arrow. The navigation pane will display the names of all the clients and resources you have access to, and you can use the search field to search the name or ID associated with resources or clients. Know that you can only search for a resource ID in the navigation pane after it has been published. If you also wish to include client resources in the navigation pane, you can click the ellipsis icon and select show client resources. You can also view the tags and IDs for resources by selecting the ellipsis button in the navigation pane and ticking show tags and show IDs. To remove these tags and IDs, simply unselect the checkboxes. To filter the navigation pane, you can click the apply filters button and select a specific status, show only specific resource types, or apply a tag such as vegetarian. When a tag filter is applied, all of the resources associated with that tag will then appear in the navigation pane. I will remove this filter for now. Let's move on to the foods tab and set up the number of days in the meal plan. To do this, click the set meal plan duration icon. You can choose to enter a number of days or select start and end dates for the meal plan. 
Today, I will be entering the number of days, which can be done by typing the number in the field, such as seven, and then clicking generate. If you like, you can then choose to rename the days in the plan structure by selecting a field and typing a new name and add corresponding dates. If required, you could also delete days by selecting the bin icon at the end of the row. After making the necessary changes, click save changes. Note that if you choose to set the number of days in the meal plan by dates, you would simply select the by date tab, enter a start and end date, and then you can rename the days as required. There is also an advanced option where you can choose to select the frequency of days recorded in that meal plan. For example, if you selected a 14 day meal plan, but only wanted to enter foods for every second day, you could enable the advanced setting and type two in the field. Now let's go back to the foods tab where you can see the days of the meal plan listed at the top. Another way you can modify the number of days in your meal plan is to use the add day and delete day buttons in the top left corner. Now it is time to create the meal plan. To do this, make sure you are in the day that you want to enter foods in first, then click the empty row beneath a meal name and start typing the name of a food. For example, I will write scrambled eggs in the breakfast section. To select a food from the list, use the mouse to click the food or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to highlight the food and then press enter. You then need to enter the amount of the food as a number and select a unit of measurement. If you like, you could also make a note about the food. Then you enter the rest of the recipes, foods and meals in the same way. I will do this for the first day now. Once you have completed the first day of the meal plan, you simply select the next day at the top of the meal plan and continue entering the meals and foods for the rest of the week. I will do this for my meal plan now. Now that the meal plan has been created, I would like to mention the number of ways you can edit, reorganize and modify meal sections. You may like to do this before creating your meal plan, during the meal plan creation process or afterwards. Firstly, you could edit the names of meal sections by selecting the meal name and typing a new one. You could also add additional meal sections by selecting add section or you could delete sections by pointing to the meal row, clicking the ellipsis and selecting delete section. You could also add note sections if desired by clicking add notes and delete this the same way as I mentioned before. You could also copy sections by selecting the ellipsis icon and clicking copy section. You can then paste the section you copied by selecting paste selection above or below from the drop down. You can also rearrange the meal sections by clicking and dragging the meal section to a new location. These functions are useful if you are creating or editing a meal plan for people who eat a small or large number of meals per day or have different eating habits on different days or perhaps you enter the meal section in the wrong place and simply need to rearrange it. Another feature you can use is adding tags to sections which you can then use when analyzing nutrient information for your meal plan. To do this, click add tag and either select from the list of tags existing within a workspace or create a new tag. I will add the tag breakfast to all of my breakfast sections and show you how this can be useful later. There are also options for editing the individual ingredient rows of a meal plan. From the ellipsis drop down, you can copy and then paste a row move a row to a different section, highlight a row, delete a row, create a new recipe using the row, multiply an ingredient quantity, divide an ingredient quantity, or convert a row to a note row. All of these options are helpful if you need to move rows around in your meal plan or make any edits or adjustments to the quantities. Now let's discuss the nutrient analyses. 
the analysis pane is shown on the right, listing the nutrients and their values for the resource. If the analysis pane is collapsed, use the expander arrow to open it. You can view the analysis as an average per day, per megajoule, or the total of the meal plan. You can also view the analysis for a selection of foods, meals, or days in a meal plan. To do this, simply select what you want to see the analysis for. To select one specific day, click the checkbox at the top of the day. To clear this selection, either unselect the checkbox or click the clear active selection icon. To view the analysis for a specific meal section, click the checkbox next to the meal section name. To view the analysis for a specific food, select the checkbox next to the food name. You can also view the analysis using section tags. I previously added the tag breakfast to each breakfast section, which means I can now view the analysis for breakfasts only. To do this, select apply filters and click the resource tag. The analysis pane is now showing the values for breakfasts only in the meal plan. I will remove this filter. When analyzing the nutrients in a resource, you can also focus on specific nutrients you are interested in, showing a breakdown by meal or food. To do this, on the Foods tab, click the Edit Nutrient Columns icon and select up to three nutrients. I will select Protein, Fat, and Carbohydrates. The Nutrient Focus column now appears on the Foods tab, showing the selected nutrients values for each food and section in the meal plan. To edit the nutrients shown in the Nutrient Focus columns, click Edit Nutrient Columns and deselect and select nutrients as required. You can also do this by deselecting and selecting nutrients of interest on the analysis pane. To show useful subsets of nutrients in the analysis pane, you can also create nutrient filters. Nutrient filters allow you to focus on the nutrients and components of interest to you without the need to disable them in your workspace settings. You can apply the filter across your resources where relevant and remove the filter at any time when it's no longer needed. To create a nutrient filter, in the analysis pane, select apply filters in the drop down menu. Then beside nutrient filter, click the plus icon and enter a name for the filter, followed by selecting the nutrients of interest. I will name an example and select a few nutrients. Then click save changes to add it to the apply filters menu. Then simply select the filter from the apply filters drop down and the analysis pane will update to just show the nutrients selected in the filter. To edit or delete a nutrient filter, in the analysis pane, click apply filters and either select the edit or bin icon to edit or delete it. Keep in mind that any filter you create is then available for all resources in the workspace and the apply filters icon indicates when a filter is applied. When analyzing nutrients in a resource, you can also focus on a specific nutrient showing ingredients that are sources of that nutrient. To do this, click sources in the analysis pane, then in the based on box, select a nutrient of interest, for example, protein. The foods that are a source of that nutrient are then listed in descending order of their contribution. Finally, on the analysis pane, you can also choose to compare a workspace meal plan against the nutrient reference values or NRVs of existing clients in your workspace. This is very helpful if you have generic meal plans that you modify for specific clients. You may want to first find which meal plan is going to meet most of their NRVs first and then copy it to the client and make any adjustments. To do this, click NRV on the analysis pane and select a client from the based on field. The percentage of the NRVs that this meal plan meets for the specific client will then be populated. As you can see, there are many different ways you can view the nutrient analysis for a meal plan. Now let's move on to generating a report. To do this, you first need to finalize and publish your meal plan, then click the ellipsis button and select generate report from the drop down. You can then modify the information that is included by manually deselecting and selecting specific checkboxes and clicking update preview. You can also choose to include or exclude page numbers and dates in the additional customization box. After making your selections, you can then either save as a PDF or print the report. Now, to quickly remind you, I created this meal plan as a workspace meal plan. 
However, you can also create a meal plan for a specific client, which could be helpful if you were creating a meal plan individualized to a client's specific dietary needs and preferences. To do this, first in an open workspace, you either create or select a client you wish to create the meal plan for, then click the client's resources tab and select create new and click meal plan from the drop down. I will call this meal plan example meal plan and click publish. Now, if I go back to the client's resources tab, you can see this meal plan in their resources table. I also mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can move resources from the workspace to a client or from one client to another. To move the meal plan I just created for this client to another, I simply open the meal plan, select the ellipsis button and click copy meal plan to client. I then select a client I want to copy the resource to and click copy. Now, when I select this client on the navigation pane, you can see the meal plan I've just copied in their resources tab. To move a workspace meal plan to a client, this is done in a similar process. I will select that vegetarian meal plan I just created and click copy meal plan to client from the ellipses drop down and select a client. Now, if I open this client on their resources tab, you can see the vegetarian meal plan. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and I hope the information in this video helps you feel confident to create your own meal plans in Foodworks Online. For more support videos, please click the thumbnail on this screen.